here's what I want to ask you, Professor Reed. Uh-huh. I've been wanting to ask you this for a long time. Yeah. So I agree with you 99.9% on all of the critique of um, identity politics. Okay. You are like, obviously, the grandmaster of the identity politics discourse, and I'm with you. But I have observed that we take different a different approach. My approach is to say in an article, let's say, about identity politics, mm-hmm. Identity is important. People value their identities. People have been marginalized on the basis of their group identities for hundreds of years. And it makes sense for people to want to organize around those identities to restore the balance and challenge. And I do all of this pablum up top so that no one can accuse me of being racist because being black doesn't make a difference. I definitely have had reviews that said, if Brianna weren't a white man, then I'd take her more seriously. Truly, this is its comment on Daily Coast. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Right. And my feeling is that a little, you get more flies with honey. And I know that so many people have so much respect for Obama right. and the legacy of the kings are such that it is, and people people who listen to this podcast were mad at me for the last episode because I said I went too soft on King. Oh, okay. <laughs> my, my feeling, not everybody, but some people. Uh, yeah. my, my feeling is that it is useful to be able to make that case which I share with you about, mm-hmm. about weaponized identity in a way that doesn't make people feel like the racialized harms that they've been programmed to prioritize and which I think are legitimately deeply felt by folks because I do think that there's a certain kind of, you know, antagonism. There's a certain kind of cruelty that one feels about being discriminated against on the basis of something, sure. inta- you know, something that you really can't change, mm-hmm. something intrinsic. Right. I want to I I'm always trying to figure out how to respect that and acknowledge that and like not inflame people so much that they can't hear me when I say, "Okay, but not near a tannin. Okay, but not common mm-hmm. layers." <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And I and I wonder yeah. when, you know, do, do there are people there are different people who are uh, engaged in different projects. I'm like out mm-hmm. here on a campaign trying to talk to people on a bus right. and you are writing academic papers and talking to classrooms and it's a different kind of audience. But I wonder if you ever, you know, you know, how do you feel about the tightrope walk that I'm doing? And what's the decision making that you're going through about like coming out bl- guns blazing like FMLK? <laughs> well, well, no, not MLK's not, family. MLK's yeah, family. <laughs> right. But, right. Because they have been a pack of leeches. Well, a lot of it has, uh, um, I think, has to do with um, you know, the audience that one is trying to address and um, and um, and how. I'll say there's something else too, too, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, I mean, regarding audience, like I'm, I'm not really trying to win like the hearts and minds of of the identitarian black PNC, right? Because for me, it's kind of like I mean, doing that is kind of like trying to win people back from from the Proud Boys or from um, from the militia movement, right? Once what once you've made the commitment, then you made the commitment. Um, and my objective is to try to um, connect with people before they make the commitment or people who haven't made, made the commitment, which is, and frankly, I, I, I spend more time talking to working people than I do. Um, and they don't mind if, when you say things like, things like you know, that, Obama that, sucks or, I mean, the things is, that we all agree I mean, with. Mm-hmm, please. This is kind of what I was saying earlier of a very dangerous mistake people, and I'm, I mean, I'm gonna say mostly white leftists are making that, oh, well, the way to connect to people right. of color, workers of color is you gotta use race language, right. you gotta do, and it's like, right. that's actually not the problem. I mean, but we're not talking about race right. language right now. We're talking about kind of taking aim. Look, my mother is a Green Party voter her whole life. Obama was the first Democrat she ever voted for. Hmm. But okay. it took until recently until she was like warning me, oh, Brianna, like maybe don't go so hard, you know, like caveat it a little more if you're talking, going to talk about yeah. John Lewis. I think you definitely like, have to be well, smart about it. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. You know, but again, I mean, yeah. I think, I think the reality is though a lot of what we're saying, again, in the context of conversations in the union, we're really not even talking much about right. identity politics per se. We're just right. straightforward right. issues. And mm-hmm. it is, you know, it is like, instead of thinking, well, if we're in a city like Philadelphia as a DSA chapter, let's get involved. Right with fighting austerity and public, you know, defending right. the public sector and the labor right. movement, that is going to automatically put you more in a working relationship with right. people of color who honestly are not going to be really caring 
the you know the specifics of all the language you use. Yeah, I mean the white and, staffers are 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 the ones who are most likely to be woke, right? Right, and 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 people, and this is where I, I'm saying this is like a dangerous thing where mm -hmm. people are are thinking, ah, this is the trick to get to the black right. people. You got to right. say the right thing. I'm like, no, right. it, it it's something else. And I mean, I'll give a great. It's also about what people care about. I'll, I'll use my dad as an example. Mm -hmm. So he's public school teacher, one of like literally two black teachers in a K to 12 district. So you can imagine he would not use the term microaggressions. I mean, he's, he's 70 years old. He wouldn't use that <laughs> yeah. term, but yeah. the file, the big file that we all have right. of bullshit from white people, yeah. you can imagine. And I've heard him all my life complain about that stuff, but right. it's like, if he were to be asked, what should a political group be focusing on? What his main concerns are is his pension. He just turned in his retirement letter today. Good for him. Congratulations. <laughs> you know, his keeping his pension. I mean, right. the, the debt, the student debt that his two kids are under. So, I, I mean, I'm going on a little bit of a tangent, but I think this is, and I think it does get dangerous. Some people try to split the difference with identity. And I've seen it so many times just lead, the train goes the same place. And that's saying, right, right. I mean, the vivid example is, well, Elizabeth Warren talked about black women's health. Therefore, right. she's... Right. Right. But I think I know, Brownie, you're not doing that, but I'm saying okay. like people start, they start thinking they can split the difference. And then more and more, I've just right. become more hardline. I'm like, I know where this leads every time. This leads to you. Yeah, Auschwitz, Auschwitz is where it you. leads ultimately. And, be, and well before that, it leads to, <laughs> it leads to sowing unnecessary doubt about right, right. our That's movement. Right. Sowing, That's right. sowing That's doubt, right. second guessing instead of right. trusting that we right. are on the right path. And, you know, I can't. So many times people who should have known better and where the clear, obvious thing to do, right, right. if you were anywhere on the left during the Bernie campaign, was throw yourself into it. And that this kind of stuff just sows doubt. Right. And again, I'm not talking about the most ridiculous version of it. But right, right. so I don't know. And again, obviously, we're talking to an ordinary person like, yeah, I'm not going to be trapping yeah, Obama right. Um, no, right, like that. Right. You know, but yeah, I think people are, are making a mistake in terms of what they think people actually are, are caring about. A few years ago at the DC Labor Film Film Festival, um, you know, they showed Make Wine, um, you know, the John Sayles film about uh, um, a West Virginia mining strike. Hmm. And um, at the end of the showing, Sayles happened to be there. Or, well, Sayles was, was there and he answered questions after it. And one of the first people got up was a young white woman who was a union staffer. I won't mention the union, but she catechized him and asked him why he had this device of this black miner who was played by James Earl Jones, who, um, who in the story, um, they'd been brought up from Alabama as scabs uh, and they didn't realize that's why they'd been brought up till they got there and the black workers uh, I mean, organized and, um, and, and joined forces with the Polish workers, I think, for the strike. So the woman asked him why, why he, employed this device when everybody knew that the Polish workers hated the black workers and they were racist. And Sale says to her, well, I'm sorry, but you know, this, this guy was real, the story was real, but I'm thinking, okay, so like this is a woke union staffer who is objecting to, um, to a class story. Mm -hmm. What the hell does that say about where the movement is or like who's coming into the labor movement, right? Uh, Paul's absolutely right about my experience too. Like it doesn't come up, right? And, and when it does come up, like when I'm at places where you know, ordinary people are talking about Obama, you know, I mean, I sit on my hands. I don't go out of my way to, uh, well, I got to rain on your parade, but we aren't all trying to go to the same place. And as the class character of, um, of political, um, of what we understand as black politics becomes clearer and clearer. I think it's more and more important to point it out. Not, not so much, so like for the stuff I write, I mean, the popular stuff, stuff I write, the two most, two versions of one gratifying uh, response I get from random people mm -hmm. are either, th thank you so much, like you helped me um, be articulate about something I was feeling vaguely, but like hadn't been able to, put into words or to ideas, or thank, thank you so much because you gave me the courage to think what I'd been thinking, but felt bad, bad, bad and guilty about. And to me, uh, I mean, that's like the audience for my 
popular writing, right? Because I see it as a movement building project, as a fishing for for cadre project, right? And 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 the kind of not even political education so much as in, encouragement for people who 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 want to be committed to trying uh, um, um, to build a better political movement. So I understand that. That's certainly how I took it, and I was very gratified by it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Professor Robinson, I, I think I cut you off earlier. It's okay. I, I've not really, you know, I've not written anything, uh, I guess, for popular consumption on politics of identity, although I'm working on a, a second edition of a book I wrote on black nationalism, um, which which really takes that up. But I think that the, the way that I'm attempting to engage these issues is also in my union, uh, uh, both, both my local that represents uh, faculty and librarians. And, <clears throat> and I've sat on the board of the statewide body, the Massachusetts teachers, as well as the national body, the, the national education association. And, you know, there, I think it's really to um, not, not always openly and explicitly, contest these ideas but for me and again i don't know that this is the winning strategy but but i argue by assertion you know medicare for all is the black agenda you know yes. until, until you convince me otherwise you know right. 15 15 an hour is the black agenda right. do you want an, an anti-racist uh, uh uh effort let's eliminate these you know standardized tests that cost millions of dollars to administer and, and kind of you know, uh, destroy any hope of, of, of creativity and meaningful curriculum. So, it, it, I mean, in a way, it's kind of a dodge, right? Because I think, you know, that, that you know, this kind of identity stuff is really, um, it, it, it is a class politics. It is unfortunate. It is, it is an obfuscation. But in, I think, most of my interventions, it's more like just trying to contest the terrain right. about what black politics is. Right. right. And, and actually yeah. to remind people that it, it's it's only in, you know, sort of the neoliberal, it's it's the last four or five decades that we have we have lost sight of the fact that economic inequality and matters of, of <clears throat> economic inequality were central to the black agenda. Somehow Sanders gets smeared as not committed to the black agenda. Like, what you know, that, you know, that, that that's a narrative that that. Uh, coalesces within you know recent decades but that was never the case somehow you know, it was never the case yeah, the, yeah the, some, the somehow is what's interesting to me right like we're yeah. we were all in agree like i i can sit here and agree with you professor robinson that of course there, there was a part of me during the campaign that was like okay people want a black agenda let's print up some flyers it just lists our entire platform and just write black agenda at the top of it but mm -hmm. you and i all of us here know how that's going to be perceived the, how that's going to be spun in the media is that Bernie doesn't care enough to come up with a black agenda. Bernie doesn't understand that there are discrete issues that affect the black community that don't affect everybody else. And he has no plan for it. Right. And there there's there's some truth to that. Right. Like there are. Do I believe that a universal program will do scads more for black people than a million particularized programs, many of which are just living in people's brains and aren't even real things that they can even articulate? Mm -hmm. Yes, 100 percent. But my my goal, my job, my preoccupation, perhaps because I am in the com was in the comms department, was to deal with the reality before us, which is to say, what can I say or do to insulate Bernie Sanders against that criticism while that still allows him to pursue that universalist project? And so to your point, Paul, I'm not I don't disagree that the over that the, the, the focus on maternal mortality is maternal mortality an issue. Absolutely. Is the folk disproportionate focus on it in the course of the campaign campaign cynical? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think that both of those things can be true. But mm -hmm. knowing that's the case, what is the harm in making sure that Bernie has a couple of op-eds out, in essence, talking about how important the black maternal mortality disparity is? And sometimes I feel like the left resists doing that easy thing that would at least give us something to point to when the accusations come flying our way that says, OK, well, Bernie actually did do that. OK, but Bernie does have a plan for that. So be quiet and let me talk about Medicare for all, which is at the root of helping my, my community through a bigger crisis. 